Well, this is the first day back. This is that new lake I I scouted here a while back. Judith's with me. She's up there at the camp house. We got all the stuff unloaded. And I got a dozen TS-85s, some game cameras to put out over watching the sets. And before it gets too hot today, I'm gonna take off and start putting in sets. We're gonna do three days of trapping and brim fishing. We'll see how it goes. But uh, it's fixing to take off the boat ramp. Talk to you as I get the sets put in. Set number one going in. Not made it too far from the cabin, finding a good many chew sticks. I put in a caster set right here. Still got one of Nate, big, Nate 408s, or <laughs> when it was made, Nate 408, Bigfoot mud anchors anchored in. I'm gonna put the TS-85 bedded right in front of it and a little offset. Run the stake out into deep water, but there's caster mound number one going in. And what I'm using for bait is Clint Locklear's Enrager Beaver Lure. I'm gonna finish this set, anchor it up out in deep water, and move on down. There's good much travel sign coming up and down through here. Maybe this will pay off. We'll find out tomorrow. Here's where I'm putting in set number two. I have a little creek system back behind me coming through this little narrow gap right here going into the big main lake itself anything traveling up through this little creek system coming through this little mouth to this creek system should catch wind of this caster mound I put just up on the prevailing wind side of this cut through trying to catch the wind drift of the scent blowing across this little tiny gap Anything comes through here, I should have a catch here tomorrow, if anything's moving. I'm going to anchor the setup out in deep water and move on down. See you in a little bit. Uh, set number three going in. I put in a mock trail set and use caster as a, not like a caster mound set, but just marking the trail I just made with the boat paddle. TS-85 bedded right here in that little cove offset out about uh, eight to ten inches back going to set the deep water stake out here on this cable drowner and move on down see if i can find any more sign we're just going to broadcast a few sets in here and poke and hope i'm not seeing a lot of good sign but there's a lot of travel sign, you know, old sign mixed with a few sticks there and there, fresh cheese. Gonna move on down. The landowner we're coming up here trapping for has put us in the bed and breakfast camp house overlooking this lake. It's a million dollar view out through there. And uh, what do you think? I think it's gorgeous. I would like to live here forever. Yeah, it's... Let's see, this is uh, overlooking the... Uh, oh! Overlooking the lake. And this is just the, the view right out the window. It's massive lake. I'm liking this, but uh, it's a big, pretty... Bed and breakfast, or B and B, whatever that is. I guess that's what that means. We don't we don't travel much. But just checking it out. Thought I'd share it on video. Well, just on my way out for the first check on these trips. Uh, see if any of them picked off a beaver, and then uh, we'll come back and do a little brim fishing. But uh, it's a pretty day. We'll see you down the line if I've caught anything. But uh, hopefully, we'll see. Well, there's the caster mound I put in first yesterday. It has scored nothing. But it's there's TS-85 bedded right there in front of the caster mound. 
Still primed and ready to go. No takers last night. And uh, we'll see if it catches tonight. There's not a whole lot of beaver sign in here at the moment after these last rains. But I've uh, got two more to check. We'll go down and see them. And uh, if I caught anything, we'll bring you back. If not, we'll just look at the set construction. See you down the line. Set number two did not catch anything. But uh, I got the little creek system behind me coming in where they got the dam at the far end. The bigger lake is up right through that little gap. I tried to take advantage of the uh, pinch point provided right here where boats have been coming through. A caster mound up here just to the left side of it. That little pinch point, anything traveling through here had to come through that gap. We'll go up here and we'll look at the set here in a second. Here's my little caster mound that I put in. And right here in front of it, it's kind of hard to see, kind of offset to the left side of it, I've got a TS-85 bedded right there. Yeah, still got hope. I'm going to top off the scent, or the, put a little more of the beaver caster on the caster mound. Due to this heat, it may have dried out, but there's a few beaver coming through here every now and then, and then they're wanting them gone because everything they're cutting down leaves these little sharp stobs sticking up, and their mowing tractor is punching the tires. So I'm going to top the, the uh, caster off and move on down to set number three. See you down the line. Here's this little fake slide that I made where they had a few fresh beaver chews around the lake. The uh, TS-85 is still bedded right there. Put caster on the slide that I made with the boat paddle, but uh, no takers on it either. The beaver just ain't in here at the moment. Uh, fresh rains may have shuffled them around they were here when I come in here and scouted it. They're just not here now. See you in a little while. We're going brim fishing. Maybe we can get some of them those catches on film. <laughs> Talk to you in a little bit. Well, I didn't even have time to get mine in the water yet, and she's already made the first brim catch. <laughs> I think I'm going to be winding up just baiting the hook and getting them off while... There's another little old brim. One first brim of the day. Looks like a cormorant or something has bit it in the back once upon a time, but I'm gonna put it in the cooler, see how many we can get. What do you think? I think it's pretty Before good. Before I could even get a hook baited, you done got one on the bank. Fine for me. We'll see you in a little It's gonna be a good day. She's already got three on the bank before I could even get my hook baited. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, funny. Thing. Yeah, really. Here's another one for the cooler. Not huge, but uh, edible. <laughs> we'll make fillets out of them. Well, <laughs> let's see if I can't finally get a pole in the water. <laughs> see you in a little bit. Well, got another one for Miss Judith. Number six. Yeah, I can't even hardly keep, go ahead. I can't even hardly keep mine in the water for <laughs> dealing with hers, but I'll get it off. We'll get you, <laughs> we'll get it in the cooler. We'll get it in the cooler. I'll, I'll get you, I'll take care of it. We just caught this big old catfish. <laughs> Bring it on the brim, in, a, in the brim bed. He'd probably go eight, nine pounds. I set the hook on that. I knew it wasn't no brim. I'm gonna keep keep fishing. I'm fixing to put the boat off in the water. This is the check of day two. Let's see if I did any good. I can't didn't catch anything yesterday. I don't know whether these beavers are still here or not. We'll find out. 
I just wanted to see if I couldn't get get one because uh, they're leaving these little stubs everywhere where they've cut the small trees down. It's leaving about a six to eight inch long sharp spike it's creating a safety danger that needs to be dealt with. Talk to ye as I check the traps and we're pulling them today. Well, got to set number one this morning. Nothing in it, but uh, see if I can't push the boat a little closer and get a better look at the set as I have constructed it. Right there's my TS-85 bedded right there, and there's my caster mound that I built. Didn't pay off, but it, uh, if there was any beaver moving through here, that would have. So, like I told the landowner, <clears throat> the sign's not here like it was back when I did scout the place. And I didn't have high hopes for a catch. But uh, even if we don't make a catch on this trip, I'm coming back this winter because there are otter in the place. And uh, he don't want them in here at all, eating up all this fish. <laughs> we'll move on down to set number two. Well, here I am at set number two. It did not pay off. A TS-85 bedded right here. There's a little caster mound I built. Uh, <laughs> I found a little beaver damage not that they've already done since. It wasn't, it wasn't in the lake yesterday, but uh, we'll go up and look at it after I get <clears throat> my third set pulled in a minute and uh, show you what they've done. I'll get this set hauled off in the boat and we'll move down to set number three. Well, set number three is a dud. That's depressing. But I do have an old beaver feed pile right here. And I have put the uh, set number three. I made a slide right here and doped it up with caster. I have a TS-85 bedded right in front of it, but did not make a catch. Only two nights soak on the uh, these three sets, but right across the lake from me, the beaver have dropped a tree. So I, I call it a failure, kind of, but I will be back to get these beavers. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, well, I'll go show that tree in a minute once I get this set pulled. Talk to you in a minute. <clears throat> this is that little, some would call it a gum tree, I believe. If I'm wrong, somebody will tell me. <laughs> that horizontal tree right there. You can see the wood chips at the base where the beavers done come in here and cut it down. We'll back up here in a minute and... Uh, this is what tipped me off that this was a fresh failed tree. This tree's green and then fallen in the water since we've been here. So uh, you can see the wood chips at the base and that beaver is about 15, 18 inches tall where they've cut it off. So we'll, we'll back up and show where the tree fell out into the lake. But you can see the wood chips at the base of that fallen tree. This is the kind of things the landowner's trying to prevent. Beaver dropping these trees all out in the lake, and I mean, it's a fairly good sized tree out through here. But uh, I'm sure I'll come back here in a week or two. If I was to come back in a week or two, this would be all <laughs> carried off. But uh, I tried. It's been a great trip, even though we didn't catch any beaver. Had a lot of fun, but I will be back here after the beaver this winter. You can count on that. <laughs> the beaver appear to be in the creek system up above this lake, and they're using this as kind of like their food pantry. But uh, we'll see. 
this one got cut since we've been here, so. It, it just amazes me that I did not make a catch because this, there is probably one big old male that's using this as like his home turf. <clears throat> Haven't seen a lot of other fresh cutting or fresh sign in the lake until I found this tree dropped. But uh, talk to you later. I'm gonna go get the boat out. Well, here's Miss Judith up on the balcony. I don't know if you can see her. Wave. <laughs> this is the the camp, huh? You look little down there. <laughs> This is the camp house overlooking the lake. I think he's gonna set it up for a rental property. And then it's right on the lake. I'm going to get with him and make sure that's what he's gonna do. And then I'll get back with you about possible rental of this place. It's a great place to bring a family. It's a huge camp house right here on the lake. It's got its own private boat ramp and everything. But, uh, Talk to you later. It's going to wind up this trip till I lay out all the fish. Huh? See you later. <laughs> yeah, see you later. Well, Lance, I'm sorry. But I come in here to load up our stuff. I sit on this older picnic table. And uh, it went kaplunk. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we may have to owe him a picnic table. Yeah. But it... Uh, just the old wood just collapsed. No injuries, no problem. But uh, sorry about that, Lance. <laughs> yeah, I had, I got up, but never seen a picnic table do that before. But uh, we'll finish loading up our gear, call it a day, and we'll get you a new picnic table. We'll see you at the house. We just got back from our trip and uh, had a package on the in the chair by the door when we got here this my otters came back from moil the two standard color otter the bigger male nice man did they ever do a good job on that and uh, the one for the landowner it's over here and my big gold otter. Big, pale, light gold otter. Beautiful. And just super pale. Don't see many that color. You see the big difference in color between them. But that right there. Moyle did an outstanding job on the... And uh, the leather. The leather, and so you just can't ask for no better job. It's perfect white, no flaws, no marks. Just a big gold otter. I am tickled with that. And your wife. <laughs> yeah. Your wife got a present <laughs> while we were out. Yeah. My girlfriend in Alabama made this. I taught her how to do the crochet. And she made it for me as an extra blanket. Yeah. And I am immensely proud of it. I taught her well. She did a good job. It's, it's an heirloom. You never do get tired of having Africans, and they're beautiful. No. Nope. So we've had a good trip. Yes, we did. But there's the big gold otter from the videos with it. The it's going to be otter number two catch up at Beaver Lake. The uh, the big male otter that I've caught on that day where he's catching the beaver up at uh, the big swamp. And this otter right here is the one that the, the landowner wanted to get tanned. So that's the landowner's otter, my big male, and the big gold otter. I mean, this video is probably not gonna do justice to the, to the color but uh, that is a super pale, super pale colored otter. I'm tickled with that. Don't see, don't see, don't see many of that color. Uh, 
Yeah, it's no. This it's is mine. gonna be mine. I'm gonna make it mine. <laughs> Uh, what do you call it, Boa? Shower. It's what you call it, Boa. But that's that's it's just gorgeous. a cool looking otter. Well, I'm gonna get this all cut up and put it on our YouTube page. And uh, thanks for following along. Talk to you.